Hello friends and welcome to edupediaworld.com, your destination to online education. Friends, today we shall learn about the melting point and boiling point. In the category of the gradation of physical properties, where we have already done the above mentioned all the physical properties. So today we shall learn the concept of the melting point and boiling point. And then we shall discuss the variation of these physical properties with respect to groups and periods in the morning periodic table. So let's find out and understand and brush up the concept of melting point and boiling point. Friends, melting point is nothing but the constant temperature at which a solid becomes liquid upon absorbing heat, which we call as melting point or melting point of a solid is the temperature at which it changes state from solid to liquid at atmospheric pressure. Friend, melting is the process of change of solid substance to liquid state at a particular temperature. We also call it a fusion. How it, the melting takes place in the substance? Well, when the heat energy is applied to the solid, it is absorbed by its molecule to gain the kinetic energy and this kinetic energy increases the rate of vibration of these molecules and the force of attraction thus no longer holds the molecule together and the states change that is the solid state changes to liquid state at the particular temperature so we can say that the heat energy supplied to the solid is absorbed by the molecule to gain kinetic energy and this kinetic energy creates or increases the vibration of the molecules which decreases the force of attraction and the melting point increases when the pressure is increased that is when the vibration becomes rather stronger the molecule from the surface of the solid becomes free and the solid thus starts to change into liquid So now let's understand the boiling point. It is just similar to the melting point, but the difference is it changes liquid state into the vapor state. So it is the constant temperature at which a liquid state changes to vapor state under a normal atmospheric pressure. We call it a boiling point. Or the boiling point of the substance is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid equals the pressure surrounding the liquid and the liquid changes into vapor. Friends, the boiling basically is process of changing the liquid to vapor at a particular temperature from all parts of the liquid and how it changes. There are certain steps like the average kinetic energy of the liquid molecule increases and the molecule acquires sufficient kinetic energy to overcome the force of attraction exerted on it by the other molecule of the liquid. And this happens with every molecule of the liquid. Then these molecules now start leaving the liquid and not only the surface but also from the near walls of the containing vessel and this shows that the presence of bubbles along the inner walls of the vessel. You can try this experiment at home by boiling some water in a beaker on the burner. You can see these bubbles and you can see after some time, after increasing the temperature, the liquid state, the water will change into steam, that is vapor. And these bubbles grow into size with the further evaporation and move to the surface in quick sessions. Basically, this causes agitation in the entire mass of the liquid, and this stage of the liquid is said to be the boiling. So, we can always say that the added energy and the intermolecular forces of attraction is the one increases and second one decreases 
the molecule starts leaving the surface of the liquid and when boiling starts the entire heat supply is used for setting the molecule free from each other which enables them to escape as a gas or a vapor. Well friends, each liquid has a characteristic boiling point and the boiling point depends significantly on pressure as it increases when the pressure is increased. Generally, the boiling point is measured and reported under one atmospheric pressure and the boiling point of one liquid at one atmospheric pressure, we call it a normal boiling point. For example, normal boiling point of water is 100 degrees centigrade. So to sum up the melting point and boiling point, we can take an example of uh, water. We have three states of the H2O, that is a water. In the solid state, we have ice. Liquid state, we have a liquid water. And in the gaseous state, we have a vapor. So melting is when ice changes to water and in boiling when water changes to vapor. So these are two melting point and boiling point of the water. So now friends let's understand how we concatenate these concept with the elements present in or designed in the periodic table. So let's talk about group. We know friends, we always talk about the metals and non-metals when we talk about the periodic table. Yes, also the metalloids also. But the major two divisions are metals and non-metals. So when we talk about the group, we'll always refer or understand the variation of melting point and boiling point with respect to metals and non-metals. So let's understand what happens when we talk about the metals. We know that in periodic table, the metals are kept on the left side, that is the extreme left side, and the non-metals are kept on the extreme right side of the modern periodic table. So the metals are on the first, second group, and so on, decreasing on when we go from left to right. So now, if we talk about the melting point and boiling point with respect to group of the metals, then we'll say that the melting point and boiling point of metal decreases on going down in a group of the bonnet periodic table. For example, I have given a, a group 1 where we have lithium, sodium, potassium with the respective melting point and boiling point. The trend we can see here that the melting point and boiling point of the metal decreases on going downwards in a group. And uh, the lithium, sodium, and potassium, lithium has the highest melting point of 180 degree, 0 0.5 degree centigrade, whereas, friends, we can say that out of lithium, sodium, potassium, lithium has the highest melting point of 180.5 degree centigrade, whereas potassium has the lowest melting point of 63.4 degree centigrade. As the polling point also show gradual decrease on moving downwards in the group. So friends, let's understand now the trend of melting point and boiling point of the non-metals. Well, the melting point and boiling point of non-metals increase on going downwards in a group of the modern periodic table. For example, we have taken the group 17 elements with fluorine, chlorine, bromide and iodine. The melting point of and the boiling point of group 17 non-metals called halogens increase gradually on going downwards in a group. So out of these four elements that is fluorine, chlorine, bromide and iodine, fluorine has the lowest melting point of minus 219.6 degree centigrade whereas iodine has the highest melting point of 113.6 degree centigrade. And their boiling point also show a gradual increase on going downwards in a group. Friends, please note that the physical state of these halogen also change regularly on going downwards in a group. For example, the fluorine 
chlorine are into gaseous state, bromine is into the liquid state, whereas the iodine into solid state at the room temperature. So the state while moving downwards in a group also changes in group 17. Now friends, see the graphical presentation of the change of melting point and boiling point when we move downwards in a group. You can notice easily the change from negative to positive that is the into the increasing order of the both the melting point and boiling points with the temperature at degree centigrade. Now friends let's understand the trend of melting and boiling point in the periods when we move from left to right. Well friends it is not a straightforward change as compared to the groups. Well the trend in the boiling point and melting point going across the periods are basically not straightforward as it is used to be in the groups. To understand this we have taken an example of third period of the modern periodic table which says that the melting point and boiling point first increases then decreases gradually when we move from left to right in the period in the modern periodic table. Let's understand this concept by the example of third period where you can see that the melting point gradually increase going from sodium to silicon and then decrease to argon. Also the boiling point gradually increase from sodium to aluminium then decrease to argon. Let's explain the trend why there is a change with the difference when we move from left to right. We don't have the straightforward change. Well friends to brush up we know that the melting point happens when a substance melts. Some of the attractive force holding particles together are broken or loosened so that the particles can move freely around each other but are still close together. The stronger these forces are, that is the stronger the intermolecular forces stronger or we can say that more energy is required to overcome them and we get the higher melting point that is a higher temperature. Similarly when we talk about the boiling point that is when substance boil most of the remaining attractive forces between the particles are broken down and kept move freely apart and the stronger the attractive forces are more the energy is required to separate them and higher the boiling temperature. Same as higher the intermolecular attractive forces higher is the boiling temperature. So friends, now take an example of this we have the six sodium, magnesium and aluminium. They are metals. 
so they have the metallic bonding right in which positive metal ions are attracted to delocalized electrons going from sodium to aluminum what happens first the charges on the metal ions increases from plus 1 to plus 3 second the number of delocalized electrons increases so the strength of the metallic bonding increases increases right hence the melting point and boiling point increases increases so we can they say that from sodium to aluminum we have melting point and boiling point in the increasing order now what happens at the silicon well we know that silicon is a metalloid with a some different characteristics from metals or non metals that is an element with some of the properties of metals and some of the properties of non metal we always call them metalloids silicon is basically a giant covalent bonding this is a basically it has a giant lattice structure similar to that of diamond so in which each silicon atom is covalently bond to four other silicon atom in tetrahedral arrangement well these extends in three dimensional format of a, which forms a giant molecules we can also call them macro molecules as the silicon has a very high melting and boiling point because say melting point and boiling point is very high just because all the silicon atoms are held together by covalent bond in which needs very very large amount of energy to be broken so the melting point and boiling point at the silicon is very high so what happens from sodium to aluminum it is on the increasing form then at silicon it is very high now what happens from the phosphorus to sulfur chlorine and argon friends we know that these four elements are non metals as they exist as small separate molecules friends phosphorus sulfur chlorine exist as a simple molecule we can write like this they are simple molecules with a very strong covalent bonds between their atoms argon exist as a separate atom we can also call it a monatomic elements as the melting point and boiling point are very low of these elements 
is very low. Why are they very low? When these force substance melt a wall, it is the vented wall forces between the molecule which are broken. That is, we can also say the intermolecular force is broken easily. which are very weak bonds. So the little energy is required to overcome them. That is low temperature can melt or boil them easily. Well, friends, as the sulfur has the highest melting point and boiling point than other three because phosphorus exists as the P4 molecule, sulfur exists as the S8 molecule, chlorine with the C2, Cl2 molecule, argon exists as individual AR atom, as the strength of ender evolved forces decrease as the size of molecule decreases. So the melting point and the boiling point decreasing in order like Sulfur, then phosphorus, then chlorine, argon. So, by this explanation, we can say that when we move from period from left to right. For example, in third period, we have first half with the increasing order, increasing melting and boiling points. Then we have the pump at silicon with the highest melting point and boiling point. Then gradually we have decrease in these physical property that is melting point and boiling point. Friends, by this explanation we can conclude that when we move from left to right in a period as we discussed period third, the melting point and boiling point first increases, then at silicon, which is a metalloid, increases to the highest then it gradually decreases when we move from silicon to the right side which is at the argon so we have a trend of melting point and boiling point like this with the highest of silicon with a bump so by this, I end up with my session of the trends of melting point and boiling point in the modern periodic table. Going back to the main menu. So with the session, we have covered all the physical properties and understood the concept and also discussed the variation of these respective properties and modern periodic table with respect to groups and periods. Going back to the main discussion, we covered the variation of valence electrons, valency, size of atoms, metallic character, chemical reactivity, nature of oxide and we completed with the gradation of physical properties. So friends, in next session we shall continue this discussion with the ionization energy 
will we learn the concept and also the trend of ionization energy in the groups and periods of the modern periodic table. Thank you. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos.